Hey everyone, I'm Dan and I'm building this expedition truck. In this video, I'm gonna make the enclosures for my LFP batteries. The last couple of videos were the balancing and charging of the batteries. So this is what they look like at the moment. Just three packs of eight cells. And the enclosures I'm going to make are gonna be a similar concept to this. It's basically just gonna be a clamp that, that compresses the batteries together. Although I'm not gonna make them out of timber. I'm going to make them out of some 30 by 30 steel angle and some 16 mil uh, stainless steel all thread with a bit of stainless tube in the middle to make a handle. So it's basically just gonna be a bracket at either end that, that um, compresses the cells together and then the threaded rod, as well as compressing the cells, a threaded rod will make it possible to mount the enclosures into the frame of the truck. So, thank you all so much for watching, and let's get started. I've got the frames made up for the ends of the brackets, now I just need to make up the mounts that are gonna take the threaded rod. These are the pieces that I'm using to make the part of the bracket that the threaded rod goes through. Eventually, they will all look like this. And I've made up this little jig here to sit the pieces in while I tack them together. It's, it's not perfect, it certainly doesn't make a symmetrical shape every time. But, like my mum always said, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Got my square end brackets made up and the threaded rod mounting bracket, so now I've just got to weld this to this. I've finished the end brackets, so this is what they look like. They are extremely heavy duty. You could probably crush the cells flat with these brackets. And this is how it's all gonna work once it's fit together. So this is the, this is the bracket. The cells will fit inside here. These two brackets will get compress the cells together and then these are handles so you can pick them up and carry them around. The threaded rod will also fit into internal brackets inside the truck that will hold this um, assembly in place. But I've just realized that we've had a bit of a critical design flaw. Uh, again, just like in my last video, this, this happens all the time. So it's my, it's my own fault. Basically, I. I checked these brackets when I was making them on against the cells to make sure that they weren't going to interfere with everything and everything was going to be okay. But I didn't check it well enough and I'll show you what's happened. So this piece of timber sits inside the bracket and that just helps to spread the load over the cell. And the cell will sit in there like this. But the problem is these this part of the bracket is just too close to those terminals for my liking. By the time you put a bus bar on there and then a connection, it's just gonna to be too close. The risk of shorting something out on this bracket is too great. It's, it's my own fault. I just didn't check it well enough and then I went ahead and I made all of these brackets. And I've spent, I've spent you know, a whole day or even longer making all these brackets up and now I'm gonna to have to go back and change every one of them basically. So that's a little bit annoying, but that just is what it is. You'd think I'd learn after all this time. I've, I've, I've done this so many times. I've done it with everything. It must be, I don't know, it must just be the way. It's uh, in my DNA, I think. I've already started making the, re redesigning the brackets. Basically, I've just changed that mount system. I've just simplified it a bit. I should have just done it this way from the start. I don't know why. I'd, decided to try and overcomplicate it and do them that way, but this is what they're gonna look like. This is the new design, it's just a piece of six mil plate just sort of folded up and welded on. So, where this original bracket cuts in here, this one's completely open there, so it gives it plenty of room for the, the terminal of the sail. So I've gone ahead and, and 
changed the majority of them. I've just got this one and this one to change now. <clears throat> and I've got the, um, I've already made and welded up the tabs. So I'll just redo those, that and that, and then we'll carry on. Alrighty, I've got the brackets finished. And here they are. These are the, the handles and the rods that are gonna pull them together. And these are the end brackets. So there'll be one like that, one like that, and then one handle on either side. And I've just got a piece of 12 mil mar marine ply for the backing. For the insulation between the cells, I'm using uh, just plastic flashing. I just got this from the hardware store. It's cheap, it's plastic, so it insulates and it's got these little lines on it that will allow a little bit of airflow. And then for the end, the end pieces, I've just made some bigger, I've just cut some bigger pieces of flashing and I've cut the corners out so that when they go in the bracket, the corner will fold in and it'll, it'll protect the sail all the way around. So now that that's done, I'm going to put the sails in, put the BMS in, tension it up, and then we'll take it and install it in the truck. These are stainless steel threads, so I'm just going to put a bit of Neversees on the end of the thread just to stop the stainless nut from galling up. Stainless on stainless can kind of bind up if you don't lubricate it. So this should prevent that from happening. Alright, that's all the cells in the bracket and it's just t tensioned up a little bit. Now I'm just gonna use my tension wrench and nip the nuts up to about 15 Newton meters. Got it tensioned up, now I'm just gonna put the bus bars on. I made new bus bars, the ones that the cells come with, they're a little bit light duty, so I made some new ones out of six mil aluminum strap. Bus bars are on. Now I've got the wiring harness for the BMS. These wiring harnesses come with the connections all one length. They're all really long, so I went ahead and shortened, shortened them to make it a bit easier to install. I didn't cut the original connections off the end because they're really nice and they've been done by a machine. It'd be hard to get them exactly the same. So I just shortened the cord, soldered it together and put some uh, waterproof heat shrink over it. So the the first black lead, that goes to the first negative of the battery, and then every other lead goes to the positive of all the other cells. I've got the wiring harness hooked up. Now I'm just gonna go through with my multimeter and test each pin of this plug. Put the negative on the negative and then just go all the way down that line. And as I go along from start to finish, it should multiply by voltages of about three. And that'll tell me that I've got each, uh, each wire connected to the correct cell because if you hook one of these wires up to the wrong cell and then you plug this in, it will destroy your BMS and it's very easy to do. So the safest option is just to hook it up like this and then go through and test all these pins to make sure everything's right. Okay, that's 
24.1 and 27.5. So now that we've tested that and I'm confident that each one of these wires is on the correct cell, we can mount the BMS on the end here, and plug this in, and then we can install it in the truck. Alrighty, we've got the BMS installed. So now I'm just gonna hook the little Bluetooth dongle up and we'll just make sure all the cells are working and see that the BMS, make sure the BMS is working. Bluetooth dongle just plugs in underneath here. This will actually be the top of the battery once it's installed. This is the app for the daily BMS. So there's all our cells. So it looks like everything's hooked up properly. It's showing 99.7%. Now we'll go and install it in the truck. The idea with this case was that these handles could be used to lift it in and out of the of the air of its compartment in the truck because they're stored underneath the floor. It's, they're very heavy, probably weigh about 50 kilos, and you, I wouldn't really want to go carrying them a, a very great distance holding these. But they are good enough just to lift them in and lift them out. So I'll just show you inside the truck where about they're going to be stored. So the batteries go in here underneath the floor. This hatch lifts up and there we have it. I've already got two installed. So what I did was just welded some brackets inside this aluminium box and the pieces of threaded rod as well as acting as a handle they clamp the cells to the box and there's a piece of rubber underneath the cells for them to rest on so they're not touching the aluminium. So I've got one, two, and then this last one is going in here. I also put a little bit of uh, 20 by 12 aluminium trim around each uh, each opening and that'll have a, a rubber seal on it and then that hatch I'll put some aluminium strip underneath that to make a nice sealing surface, surface and that hatch will be fixed down so no water will be able to get in or dust. All right, I've got the battery in here. First of all, I'm just gonna glue down this piece of rubber. It's a, it's a piece of tread rubber, so it's got little treads in it and hopefully that'll allow a little bit of airflow underneath the batteries. And it's glued down to a piece of marine ply, so I'll glue this down and then we'll drop the battery in. All right, that's all three batteries in. And they are really, really solid. They're like not going anywhere at all. I know one, one criticism would be that there's a lot of metal around. So it may be easy to short, you know, create a short, say if when you're tightening these nuts, it, it's not, wouldn't be unthinkable that you could strike a spanner or a shifter against one of the bus bars. Uh, I'm aware of that. So, you know, hopefully I won't have to be taking them in and, out, in and out very often and I'll just have to be really careful with that. But other than that, they're held in really well. And this way, um, on their side like this, this was the only way that they would fit in this space. Uh, I couldn't have them orient oriented any other way. So this is the best thing that I came up with. I also, I really like these handles because it does make it easy just to pop a bank out if they need to be worked on. I may end up actually having to flip them all around because the positive terminal is at, at, this, at, the, at this end of each battery, but the electrical system is going there. So the positive is the furthest, furthest away that it could be. So if I spun them all around, it would make the positive a lot closer and that would mean a little bit less um, 
a little bit less cable, which would save a little bit of money. So we'll see how that goes. But that's it for this video. The next thing I'm gonna do is put the electrical panel in that I've got, and I might make a little rundown video on you know, what, what all the components are and how it all works. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.